not taking personal anything, anything. I mean, of course I had my, my breakdowns where I received like super bad feedback sometimes from my bosses at that time, now my partners, sometimes from clients too. And it's hard to hear that your work is not fine sometimes. And as creatives, uh, we are uh, like sometimes so in love with an idea that it's very hard to, to quit that idea. But I think when you pass that line and you decide to not take that personal, it's like change like your life and the quality of your like life, like enjoying your work uh, in a different way. And uh, that will be like, yeah, Daniela from the past, like, it's okay, don't take it personal. <laughs> be neat, be clean, create a very beautiful portfolio and show it to the world. Um, uh, for us, it's been the whole difference. Keeping a nice portfolio and taking care of the photos we post in our website and the kind of content we show, it's been all the difference for us. So that will be my recommendation for any person that wants to open their studio or a uh, established studio, portfolio is everything, yeah. Well, um, we divide our process in three phases. We normally start with the briefing. It's super important. Once a client decides to work with us, we assign a creative manager that will be in contact with the client since they want until the last file delivery. So we start with the briefing. Then we have a, like a second kickoff meeting to review the briefing. Like we dedicate a lot of time to briefing processes. And after that, uh, we move on with the mood boards. It's a, uh, normally it's a collection of images with some inspiration, inspiration from, I don't know, art, architecture, maybe a tree, maybe a color, could be anything. Uh, we share these first ideas with the client. We normally receive feedback, and in that point, we decide if we can move on or if we need to review something on the conceptual part of the, of the mood board. Uh, once we are okay on that, we move on to the branding pitch. We normally share uh, the logo type, of course, uh, color palette, the typography system, and at least 10 to 12 examples of the brand behavior in real context. Uh, it's very important for us to show how the brand is actually plays in the real life. It's, um, it's not enough to show a logo in an isolated white and black uh, slide, it's not enough. So for us it's very important to show the brand in context, even if it's a collection of renders. Uh, but showing behavior is very important for us. So once the client approves uh, the project, we move on to the last uh, phase, which is working on the, uh, we call it uh, outputs which means uh, we prepare all the printable formats of the, uh, the different elements that we include in the scope of the project. And we develop those uh, files with uh, specific technical matters, like kind of paper, like uh, the Pantone code, etc. And that's it, yeah, that's normally the order of a regular process. Of course, if we are developing a project with architecture or web services, we normally start uh, when the client approves the brand, we normally start um, the architecture part or the web part. Because at the end, having the concept done and having the brand done, it's like the first and the main uh, thing we need to, to keep moving on the, on the process. Worldwide, like everything that is going on in the world, in the entire world, that we have a necessity of communicate and um, creating new products to people and connecting brands with people every time is harder and harder with so much th things going on and uh, social media, everything is like uh, a lifestyle these days. So I think the task is changing all the time and we designers are uh, adapting to that changes every day.